Hello and welcome to Morningstar. I'm Emma Wall. I'm joined today by Ian Mortimer, manager of the Guinness Global Innovators Fund, to give his three stock picks. Hello, Ian. Afternoon. So what is the first stock pick today? Uh, first stock pick today is LAM Research, uh, a semiconductor company uh, we bought at the end of last year. Um, so this is a business that does um, uh, the etching, if you like, uh, for kind of creating um, the sort of circuitry, if you like, on sort of silicon wafers. They also do other things in terms of um, efficiencies uh, of that design. Um, it's an interesting company uh, in that it has uh, lots of uh, sort of Asian um, uh, clients. Uh, so they have things like Sa uh, Samsung, uh, things like sort of Taiwan Semiconductor. Um, but what we quite like about not only just the business, but we also like the sort of the secular theme as well. So what we recognise is there's a lot of questions around valuations in IT. Um, within the semiconductor space, though, we see this as an area that's actually still offering quite good value. Um, I think there's a question mark um, that maybe it's offering good value because it's a very cyclical sector. Uh, and maybe we're at the top of that cycle, um, so therefore it deserves a lower multiple. However, we believe um, that actually these companies are really growing their earnings quite significantly and actually deserve a higher multiple, and that maybe that cyclicality, maybe the trough won't be as deep this time because the, the trends we're seeing in markets in terms of the demand for the number of, sort of uh, semiconductor chips, whether it's through driverless cars, whether it's through the Internet of Things, or whether it's just the density uh, of chips in some of these devices as well. When you're investing in a stock like this, how much do you have to be an absolute tech geek and how much of it is just about reading the balance sheet? Uh, I think it's a bit of both. Um, you know, we, we don't take a view whereby we are putting ourselves out as experts um, in semiconductors necessarily. Uh, and we like to, yeah, really focus on the numbers. Uh, and as you say, sort of strong balance sheets. Um, we like to see good cash flows. Uh, and ultimately, we're trying to use um, sort of uh, the idea of, um, as I say, those sort of more secular trends to try and get a feel for how this company could grow. Um, and then taking our sort of putting our valuation hat on, if you like, to make sure we're not paying up too much for that. And what's the second stock pick today? Uh, our second stock pick today is Boeing. Um, so again, a sort of slightly more interesting one in terms of how we think about innovation. Um, so this is obviously a sort of the air airline manufacturer um, in, in the industrial space. So we don't just look at technology stocks. Um, what we quite like uh, about this company is not only is it again in a quite a good secular growth trend. So there's more and more uh, sort of demand for aircraft, particularly narrow body, both in Europe and Asia. Um, but also what we quite like from a technological point of view or an innovation point of view uh, is how um, what the efficiencies they're driving in terms of their automation. So today they can make um, uh, their 737 aircraft in nine days, which is a huge reduction of where it was before on their rolling platform. Um, they have a whole um, uh, uh, new factory in Seattle just making wings for aircraft. So that really increases the efficiencies. Uh, so that's really driving down costs, particularly through labor. Um, they're also using innovative things such as sort of uh, additive construction or sort of 3D printing to make some of the uh, sort of non-critical parts for their airline. And so what we're seeing with this business is a sort of secular growth trend, uh, a driving down of efficiencies. Uh, and so now we've got to the point where this is really a kind of a cash flow uh, growth company. Uh, we're expecting uh, next year up to sort of 15 billion uh, of operating cash flows. Um, and uh, we think they've also got a benefit for maybe some of the, the tax benefits we see in the US. And, and how um, dependent is an aircraft business on global economy because we had fantastic conjoined growth across the world mm. last year but that can't go on forever if we do see a dip as we have done in mm. UK GDP over the last week does that impact airline businesses yeah absolutely I mean it will be uh, part of any you know most businesses really will be affected by kind of GDP growth um, and we would expect the airline manufacturers will be part of that um, however we just you know we're not trying to necessarily predict where we are in that cycle um, from what we can see today um, you know they've got a strong backlog I think they've got uh, almost seven years um, worth of production uh, as their backlog uh, and so therefore you know we feel pretty confident that um, you know even if there is a sort of slight slowdown globally uh, this is still actually a pretty solid business. And what's the third and final stock? Uh, the final stock I've got is another uh, company in the semiconductor space, which is NVIDIA. Uh, so very popular stock, I think, with a lot of people. Uh, it's actually one we've owned for over a decade in our strategy. Um, so we've been quite early on. Uh, and again, a really kind of interesting business that has a very good core business. So it's making the graphics processing units uh, and sort of started off as sort of PCs and particularly for gaming. 
uh, and they've taken that idea uh, and they're really driving into some of the sort of fastest growth areas of the market. Um, so they're doing incredibly well using their chips uh, and sort of the new AI technology and data centers. Um, they're right up there in terms of things like driverless cars, um, you know, and they're being used by some of the, you know, the largest sort of tech companies out there, whether it be Microsoft or it's Amazon uh, or it's Google. Um, and what's also interesting from an investment point of view is although this is a more expensive stock, um, you know, we're seeing uh, earnings that could potentially double um, between 2017 uh, and maybe 2019, uh, so in a very short period of time. Um, and also they're driving efficiencies too. So actually their operating margins are expanding. So not only is their top line growing very, very quickly, uh, that's also coming through sort of, it's sort of leveraged, if you like, onto their bottom line too. Ian, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. This is Emma Wall from Morningstar. Thank you for watching.